this is Boxing Tickets NA in association with Val and Gentleman. And we're glad to say we're joined one day out from fight night. <coughs> He's back, An Anto Kalkachi. How are you, mate? I'm great, mate. How are you? Busted. Yeah. I think you get most of Nando's. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. May go for another one later, too. An anybody's coming to Birmingham, Nando's is now closed for the weekend because Nando's done the amount of chicken. <laughs> Oh, it was lovely. It was lovely. I enjoyed that. It, definitely good to refuel. Obviously, after you know making weight and everything else, it's probably the, the wee enjoyment you have you can have before fight night and yeah. sort of now relax and zone in for the fight. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's always my favourite. It's always my go-to after weigh-ins. Uh, give it a wee hour or two now, and I'll go and I'll have my spaghetti bolognese and maybe a wee side of steak. Maybe obviously Nando's could get involved in sponsoring you. Obviously, you know, not only just give you free food, but give you a pile of money as well, because you always big them up. Nah, I don't have enough followers for that. I've tried that a few times, like, but no, it hasn't happened for me. I'd even take a wee free meal after the way, and that'd be me. <laughs> a double chicken burger and a double portion of peri peri fries and four, 14 glasses of Coke. And maybe a wee, a wee starter with halloumi cheese. So we're all about it. We're going to be making people hungry now, obviously, watching the <laughs> yeah. Um Obviously, I think the last time we spoke to you was the 3rd of June, and at that stage, you had no fights. There was nothing sort of coming up. Um, we sort of held off the interview when you knew the fight and stuff was announced, because obviously the last time, you obviously were fight week, and then obviously Woodstock tested positive for COVID, or something the team tested positive for COVID, so we wanted to make sure it was done out of the way. And fingers crossed, touch wood, all that palava. Well, obviously, going to have a fight night tomorrow night. Well, that's all done, done and dusted. So unless we start something seriously happening to him or me, um, there's going to be a fight tomorrow night. Now, but we're fighting; it's happening. Like, <laughs> so that's it. That's it. I know it's been a long time coming, but I'm ready to rock now. And and it's like 20, 21 months of inactivity. Obviously, COVID sort of played a, a big factor in that. Obviously, you you had issues with your mouth and stuff. You obviously had it. I think you had to get teeth and stuff taken out or something like that. Yeah, You'd done the work, needed done. Then obviously there was a positive test and stuff with, with Woodstock's camp. Like both of these, I think, you're 21 months inactive, he's 26 months inactive. But obviously for you, it's it's just another day at the office. It's You're not going to use any activity as an excuse and obviously the fight. It's the best version of you, best version of Leon. That's what you have to expect. Well, that's it. That's it. I mean, yeah, I'm inactive, but I mean, I've boxed for 20 years. You know, an activity, ring rust or whatever. You kind of, you kind of, that's what the sparring's about as well, really. You know, and to work your way through it. And I've had, I've had decent round sparring. I have sparred with um, J P Hale. He's a tough, tough kid, Sean Duffy. You know, I've been over to Monk's Terrence, Connor Kerr, and what's the other big fellow's name? No? Darrell Clark. Forgot that there. I mean, that's. The food coma's kicking out. Yeah, 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 I'm half asleep here. Um, I have plenty of around sparring, all's, all's went well. I mean, I feel like I was performing in sparring, so like, if I can perform in sparring, I should be performing in the ring. And it's like, you've been used to inactivity as well, obviously, you had an activity in your career before, so it's it's not something that's new to you. You know, a lot of people with COVID, they've had an activity and not been used to it. Yeah. Whereas, you've had an activity in the past, so you know exactly what it's like. You probably know maybe the first few rounds. Not sort of giving any game plan anything away, but probably the first few rounds. You probably find your feet in the ring to go, is this what I've actually been in a ring fighting against for? Yeah. You know, not to say, you could probably blow them out in a round. Just boxing for you, you just don't know what's going to happen. Boxing's a funnier sport, you know, so I, I would never really... I would never really say anything like that, really. Mm -hmm. You know, there's two men in here uh, fighting. Anything can happen. But I'm 100% confident with the work that I've put in down in the Evolution Boxing Club over the last six and a half weeks, and I'm confident that will stand by me. And on the sort of tra train of evolution, obviously, would it be would it be fair to say it sort of give you like a new lease of life? You know, people you probably may have not met before. Obviously, some of the young amateurs and stuff coming in and idolizing you. You're mm -hmm. obviously British champion. They're seeing you as a role model. Is that sort of played an aspect and? Making you probably fall in love again with the sport when it's when it's been tough for you at times with an activity and everything else. Well, it has, it has. You know, I, I see when I go through them doors. You know, and for my gym sessions, you know, two or three times a day, you're walking and you're seeing, you're seeing the kids, and and every time you see, you know, the the look at you, and, and you can definitely tell they're looking up to. 
looking up to me and it's a it's a good it's a good feeling. I mean, not only that, but even around around my own my own area, my own estate as well. It's like it makes me feel very proud and um, makes me just feel like all the work's paid off. Mm-hmm. And um, just not only that, it's like since I've was that, since I've been down the evolution, I've been welcomed with, with open arms. You know, I stayed I stayed in Bernie's house, Ian's mum's house. You know, the whole time she she looked after me. It was. It was just it was just a really good experience, something I'll never forget and, and I really enjoyed it. Definitely probably make you feel twenty two again rather than thirty two. Feel like a kid now, yeah. <laughs> you know, but obviously it's just wee things that God can make a difference and I say, you know, you train an evolution that might sort of change one of them kids' futures in boxing where they might think the going's tough, but now they've seen someone that's there can be a role model, they might say, I wanna be the next I wanna be the next Apache, you know, I wanna I wanna be British champion, I wanna go on and do something. It may just give them that wee extra five or ten percent they yeah. need to perform. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, hundred percent. I mean I know obviously I know it's um some of them kids, there's so many talented kids down in that gym, you know, and I know that might give them the extra wee boost and and push them on and you know, anything's possible, you know, as, as long as you keep plugging away and, and training and, and, and looking after yourself, anything's possible for anyone. Um, we've obviously had the press conference and the way and obviously you'd have, you'd have got a head to head with Leon yesterday and he sort of backed off and obviously um, he sort of reached out I think to give him a give him a wee hug today and he sort of didn't seem to like it, he seemed to be very very rattled. Was there anything he said in particular to sort of to try and wind him up or to see what sort of reaction he get? No, no, I tried to just strike a Conor McGregor post. <laughs> And he didn't like it. He didn't like it. So I threw a couple of wee messing about shots just to see what way he would react. And you now he's been all talk the whole way through this. You know, writing, writing a lot of shit on social media that like things that I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? It's like what he's hearing through his team. It's got nothing to do with me. The fight's here now, and I'm not gonna get. He's gonna if he needs, he wants to deal with something. He's gonna get a deal with the morning. Do you, do you find like obviously he's on? Do you find like he's a different? Per- obviously, I know the last time when he's when he seen you when the fight was called off fight week, he wouldn't say boo to you whenever he's walking past you, but he'd say things to you online. Are they sort of like a troll in there in a way? He's saying everything online, but in person he's going into a shadow. He's, or maybe he's trying to play a game. Maybe he's trying to play a game or something. But yeah, he was. He would. Uh, he looked silly shit on Twitter mm-hmm. after some some sort of fight that was called off that I never even knew about. You know, God's honest truth, I knew nothing. There was no fight for me. Mm-hmm. Um, whether Warren had told him that the fight was happening or what, but it was never happening in my end. So, uh, I don't know. He just, yeah, he, he seems to be a bit of a troll. He seems to, like, you know, to get people's attention through is, is the crap that he raised. But that's all right. It's fine. Boxing on it. And like, let's face it, it's, it's a voluntary defence, so you picked him. So it's not like you're scared of him or you don't want to fight him. Yeah. You've chosen him as the opponent when obviously you could have maybe had a mandatory or you, you could have vacated the belt and went elsewhere. So like, I know in sort of ways it's not like you're bigging yourself up, but you've given the opportunity to get back in the British title level again. Absolutely. He's had, he's had two opportunities before, although they were close enough uh, and he pushed it and he shows a lot of heart. He didn't get past the lane, you know what I mean? And that was that's the thing. And... Um, yeah, as, as 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 you say, this was a, a bomb. I picked him. I think he would. He, he's a good TV fight. He's gonna bring this a, a good style, you know. And um, that's it. He should kind of really appreciate that and appreciate that he's getting the payday too, and he's getting the opportunity, you know, the to, to win the British title. So mm. he would have never gotten that any other way. Exactly. You know, and I say that's that's the thing nowadays. It's like you give him the opportunity, obviously. I know sometimes the fight gets built up to make a fight. Obviously, maybe after the fight, they'll probably thank you for the opportunity, you know, that they had. You know, probably trying to build it and trying to say things, and then afterwards, it's like, I'm only messing with the ante. I was sort of trying to get inside your head, but, yeah. but that's boxing. It's a fight after the fight. You know, they want to shake hands and wish you all the best. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. No one gets inside my head. No one, and I really mean that. It's like it doesn't matter what they say. You know about me, or, or or you know if they're trying to play games, it doesn't work with me. I've, I've been in this game too long. You know what I mean? It's like we're gonna fight, like so we're gonna see where they end up. Like no, no, no point trying to get into my head. He was growling today at the way, and you know when I was telling you, you know, he growling. You know I don't know what he was at. 
But um, he ain't getting in my head. Was he trying to pretend he was a lion, but making a dog noise know, instead? I don't know what he was doing. Like it was, uh, I couldn't understand what he was saying, but I heard a wee bit of in the background or like. But did, I don't know. Did he not call himself? Does it make him not Lionheart or something like that? I think he. I don't know what. You know, know this thing is lion. King Memnon or something. Um, Obviously, main event tomorrow night as well. Um, yeah. Your first fight is a beat as a Frank Warren fighter. Um, yeah. What a way to sort of announce you to the BT audience. Obviously, I know you fought, you, you won the title against Sam Bone as the away fighter the last time. You're now the home fighter main event on a on a BT show. So there's a guess that shows be choosing Frank. Obviously, going ahead with Frank is now paying dividend because he's he's putting the faith behind you, making you main event. Yeah, it's like it's. it's I just put a post out there, not you know, not too long ago, just saying like I've waited a decade, ten years nearly, to get in this position, and I'm here. So like, it feels good. It really does. It feels good to be top of the bill on TV. Don't get me wrong, like I mean, I'll never be the home fighter until I'm I'm home in Belfast. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it is. But as I say, I'm the same home fighter, but I I'm still fighting like I'm the away fighter. And does it add any extra pressure sort of into the fight, obviously being main event? Because obviously, I know, you know, I don't know, obviously, I know Carl's going to be there tomorrow night doing commentary yeah. in the fight. But obviously people's going to say, you've been getting an opportunity as a main event. Has there added pressure to obviously have a highlight reel knockout or a really, really slick performance to sort of announce yourself to the next level? No, no. It's, I mean, as, as you were saying at the start, I've been nearly two years out of the ring. And before that, before that fight, it was nearly two years out of the ring. Mm -hmm. So like I mean, what if I had one fight in four years? I think about five five fights in four years and three of them are, three of them are British title fights. Who's that? That's this is your this is your fifth fight in four years and three of them's been British. Is title that what fights. it is? Yeah. I don't know if you've got the dates right there. What, uh, what is it? Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. The Martin well, Ward fight think, was twenty seventeen. Oh yeah, had to be Argentina. Is that two fights? I think two fights in four years or something like that. I'll have to look into it. I don't know what what it is, but not not many. So I mean. It's been, I have a wee bit of time off from whatever else, so like, I mean, I say if I have to win this by one round or win it by a knockout in the first round, it really does not matter to me, so. And it's like, I know sometimes people look at age and they look at you being 32, you're probably the youngest 32 you could be because you haven't taken any punishment in fights, you know, they've all been really easy, like, probably another example you use is Paddy McCrory, 33, but he's not been, <coughs> in, he's not been in a tough fight, the fight's not been bruising to him, yeah. so... You'll not even feel 32, obviously, the fact that if somebody can't do you any serious damage, then the world's your oyster. It's just a number, isn't it? You know, most of, most of these world champions now, the minute they're all in their 30s. You know, there's a couple, obviously, young, very good up-and-comers, you know, mm -hmm. who hold titles. But for me, it's just a number. I haven't been involved in much, as you say, in much wars. The only war that I was really in was Sam Bowen. Um, I feel relatively fresh. I've never taken any big shots. Well, I have had, I've been taking a few big shots, but I mean, I've never had any career damaging big shots. Mm -hmm. I've, I've still a few years in me yet. Like, you know, as long as, as long as things keep going my way and, and I, I have that bit of luck, then there's no stopping me. So that's all about, it definitely is. Um, obviously, um, Carl sort of put a thing out in Sunday Life on, on Sunday and they've sort of like, I you up for Jamal Heron, probably more for the fact he wants somebody to have re revenge for him. I think Heron's going to be defending his head against Stevens, and so that might not make any difference. But is it great? Obviously, I know you and Carl used to be stable mates and things like that. Yeah. Is it great that obviously he's going to go into the Hall of Fame, you know, three time TV world champion? Is it great when obviously a, a good lad like Carl is still giving you praise even in retirement? Yeah, uh, it's, very, it's amazing. That's a, you know, I said in an interview yesterday, it's like, Every time that he says anything, really, like, you know, even though I know him from he was a wee child and then he knows me well, when around 12, 13 or whatever, um, still gives me a good feeling, you know, because cause of what he's achieved. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've shared many around Sparn, and, um, yeah, it still gives me uh, a wee cheer, uh, and it's good, it's good to have him here tomorrow, and I hope I can perform for him. The last time he was at one of my fights, I lost to Martin Ward, so I hope I can put on a good a good uh, a good fight for him and, and, and maybe get that we crack it Jamel who knows they, they, take, they take it back another one obviously not to have it in a sort of negative with the Martin Ward fight obviously going back to the Ronnie Clark fight yeah. in Scotland um, 
anybody that's sort of watched that fight or obviously has watched it on YouTube since to see Carl and Christine jumping about at two kids, yeah. you know, like they just won a fiver in the sweet shop. Yeah. You know, they were going mad. So um, obviously I know Carl's going to have to try and be on the fence sort of tomorrow night, but obviously everything inside is going to be, let's go on though, let's get to work. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, sometimes when I watch that fight back, and I do watch it back, is uh, I see, I, I actually just watch it back for a car's reaction. <laughs> he was going nuts, he was losing his mind ringside. Um, it was even car. before the stoppage, even, I think he had, a, I think he had a big right hand, and he knew it was coming, so it was, it was Go on, go on, Anto. I think Carl, Carl's seen what I can do in the gym that I maybe I haven't done. I have, well, I haven't done mm -hmm. on, on the live, on the live TV, like. But um, I think it'd be more frustrating for him as well to watch me and what you know what I mean. So I think he was just happy to see me get a good win and a good knockout because like I know I can punch. I know there's very little super fellow that's out there that can punch as hard as me. Mm -hmm. So it's just about putting it in the action now, isn't it? And I think everybody knows, obviously, of your talents. Like, I think Tyrone McKenna had said, like, you pretty much, as an amateur, you didn't spar, but you go down and win the all Ireland and things like that, and you're going, like, how is it possible? Like, yeah. you just have, you just have like, a, an inbuilt talent <coughs> that you don't even need to train for, you know, when you're an amateur, and you're going, like, if Ando performs at 100%, nobody's going to nobody's gonna be near you. Well, that was back then. I mean, I was a young young kid. I mean, I was, I was just one of them, them kids that, like, I don't know, it was a weird one. I just took I took to everything. I mean, whether it was football, whether it was boxing, whether it was hurling, Gaelic. I just took that. It was good at them all. But um, I just believe it was, I, I always had the belief in myself as an amateur. You know, like that I, I could have walked in a week off, a week out, but that type of, them days were well and truly over. I yeah. trained I, I, proper camps and trained twice, sometimes three times a day. You know, them days were my lucky days, you know, so lucky these days. <laughs> I always say in, in the pro ranks, always say if somebody's put on a full camp and you, you've only put on one week, yeah. you soon know the difference after about five or it's six different rounds. Different story, different story now, now, you know, there's 12 rounds and there's hunger and you're getting hit hard with smaller gloves, big big bandages underneath them, you know, it's, this is no, this game's no joke. And, and everyone, know, people that are pro will tell you, it just ain't a joke. It's just serious. This is this is you putting your life on the line. No one sees this. You know, mm -hmm. one punch can change everything for you. And um, it's not it's not something I was going to be doing. Now. It's taking it's going to be coming into camp a week out and doing something like that because you get you could get really serious. Seriously hurt. Yeah, exactly. We've obviously seen we've seen obviously too many times of it in the past, and it's been preparing for properly. Yeah. Um. Not obviously. I know you want to look we'll look past Leon Woodstock because obviously you're going to give him. You're going to give him every respect as, as you do with any opponent. Um, you know, he's coming here hungry, probably last chance saloon, obviously, or then pretty much becomes like a sort of journeyman type sort of fight for somebody coming up. So you may not get another opportunity this again. But obviously, if we're going to say when you are victorious, obviously, you're going to say if. But would you like to be out again before the end of 2021? I'll be unwell, of course, I would. Of course, I would. It's and, and it, yeah, I, I would love to be out before the end of two twenty twenty one. But I mean, just we'll talk about that after this. It's uh, coming up to Christmas obviously as well. So Santa will need paid as well. Yeah, you know, so um, another another fight before Christmas will obviously make a thing with that. That'd be nice. Um, at thirty two, obviously time is on your side as well. So obviously I know you've well done in the past, but obviously you're happy to mix it with anybody. I know in your previous interview you said whoever wants to fight me, fight me. So like. For Frank, it's probably the easiest, easiest job he's gonna have. Is look, I don't care who it is, just give me a big fight. That's it. I'll fight anyone. You know, I mean, I had easier fights to pick than Leon Woodstock. I could, I could have picked anyone up them rankings, and I would like a challenge. But whoever, it does really doesn't matter. Who. Just give me them opportunities as long. Obviously, I have to keep doing what I'm doing. But anyone, anyone. As long as obviously I'm getting paid well too. It's just about he says like the Canelo, you want payday. I know this. Yeah, you know, of course, everyone you want payday. Wants, if you get then. I uh, see. I believe so many kids have fight for buttons. You know, they get in there doing a six rounder for eight hundred quid or something or something, and they're even paying for their own purses. Mm -hmm. They're paying to get on these shows. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. What you know? It's the only sport I've heard of. But you know, you're a professional athlete, and you're paying. Or you're getting paid fifty quid maybe. 
a hundred pound now for some fight. It's mental, mm-hmm. and that side of things need need to be changed ASAP because everyone should be rewarded for for their training camp that they put in, and for essentially putting their life on the line every single time. Pretty much feels like a, you're like a part of a circus. Sometimes you're like, you're a lion and the you're like a lion in the the arena. Obviously, everybody's obviously paying their money to come in and see, but the lion all it gets is a bit of meat at that's the it. end. That's it. Well, that's that's it. You know, and like all these rich rich promoters and rich people on 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 the on the background of it all, and yet you're in this kind of everything. It's kind of like paying to pay up. Yep, definitely. And obviously, it's good you've got that stage of your career where you're getting purses now, rather than obviously having to sell tickets. A lot of yeah, a lot of ones coming up through the ranks sort of have to do now as well. Um, Obviously, don't want to keep you much longer because obviously you know, uh, you know, this time tomorrow it's night. Nearly dinner time. It's nearly, it's nearly, dinner nearly, time. nearly dinner time. <laughs> You're obviously hungry again as well. Like, like um, I don't know how you're going to need a, a crane or something to take you to the ring tomorrow night. Well, I mean, you know? I've been living off salads and all. Shout out fresh to the Daisy. Sort me out the whole time of my meals. I mean, I've living off them for weeks now, so it's time for a couple of nice meals and, 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 and chunk out a bit, why not? And get home and enjoy some of Nico's pizzas? Oh, Nico's every single time, the boys look after me flat out, flat out, and you know what? I'm, I'm buzzing to get home and get that, I haven't been to their new restaurant properly, mm-hmm. you know, to take my missus and whatever and the kids out, so it would be it would be nice to get down and have a nice meal there, or maybe have a cocktail or two or a beer. It'll be like one of them food reviews that bring you to plate everything and obviously you'll try it all. I'll you know, try just, everything. Just set a big spread out. And, and I'll try all. absolutely everything. You know, but I always stick to my usual, which is a picante pizza. If you haven't tried Nigos, get down and try it. Unbelievable. Best best pizza in Ireland by a male. And if you mention Nando's name, they might give you some money off. They might give a wee bit of discount. I don't know. I don't know what the lads are well. Or they're, they're, they're the best. Good lads. Definitely. Um, obviously, when I finish off, then just obviously giving a message back home. They obviously people tuning in tomorrow night, and obviously people that it's been helping make a difference. Obviously, keeping you involved still in the sport because at times you get probably walked away, you know, and things don't go your way with the politics of sport. Yeah. But what would you like to say to those um, back home? And obviously, why should people tune in tomorrow night and watch a fight? Well, like the, I mean, the people, the people that have kept me in, you know, Ian Mahoney's. Like, I mean, no one understands what. What goes on in the background of boxing, it's like, it's a mental fuck, like, excuse the French, but it's like, you know, one minute you're, you're in, um, one minute you're, you're happy and you're feeling good, and the next minute there's fights being put back, boom, a couple of months, you know, and then before you know it, a year down the line, it's just tough, it's tough, and like, uh, it's amazing the people I have around me, you know, my, my father, my mother, my girlfriend, my kids, Ian, all, all his family, Evolution Boxing Club, everyone, everyone, you know, they've all kept me in there, just six, just seven, eight weeks ago, I was never on a box again, I was just getting bad news after bad news, and then this came, and I was like, it's time to, and, I, and I'm all in, I'm all in, but uh, yeah, big thank you to them all, they've all got me to where I am now, I could have easily walked away from it, but I'm here now. What, what would you say to, I'm just throwing another question just off the top of my head, but what would you say to other boxers probably maybe potentially thinking the <coughs> same? Obviously, we, you know, we've just had, what, 17, 18 months of a pandemic and people not really getting much of a fight. And obviously, no, Sean, it's your, your own stable mate and things like that. He's been out once. But for fighters that maybe are going, is this game for me? Do you just have, I think maybe change that up, sort of do something a bit different, take yourself out of your comfort zone and find where your true love is in the sport? It's just so uncertain at the minute, you know, say unless you have like the likes of Frank Warren on TVs behind you, like, you know, you can basically expect buttons and, you know, it's like, keep working away and, and looking after your, your, your private life, you know, your, your kids and your families, you have to keep a job and um, it's just the way it is, you're not getting paid enough. And train and look after yourself in the, in, in the background, hoping that these uncertain times, you know, are over, you know, but if you're watching TikTok on the regular, you know, it would, these uncertain times could get worse, so who knows, who mm-hmm. knows, it's like, it's funny, just just keep plugging away and look after your body, and that's, that's all I can't say really, like, but I want to shout out all my sponsors as well, I mean, I genuinely couldn't get through camp without them, mm-hmm. I mean, 
they don't realize what they what they do for me. I, I don't think they realize anyway. But like especially like Cozy Roof, Shackle Cosmetics, Nagos, Braces of Daisy. She would look after my grub and stuff. Um, or DMC Plumbing and Heating, or Mitchell Cleaning, Box Smart. Every one of them all throw in. They all do their piece, and it makes my life a lot easier. So I want to give them all a big shout out. And, and some of them could yes. easily walk away during the pandemic as well. Easy, times, easy. times are tough for them, so it probably shows the person you are. And and obviously giving them plugs and things like that there obviously makes yeah. a difference for them as well. So yeah. it probably shows more the person you are because you're not going to big yourself up, you know. But anybody that's sort of going to be your contact, I don't think there's too many people out there that could say a bad word about you. No. The trolls maybe online, you know, they're going to say Fuck a bad them. word. They're going to say them. they're going to say bad of anybody, but. Like, you get them, don't you? Get everyone that, that well, you get these people who like look at these interviews and they'll be like, he's, he's an idiot or what, you know. He just, but what I do is just say it how it is, and that's exactly how it is. I mean, this is no glamorous business we want to make fortunes in, you know what I mean? There's there's so many egos that I know personally, just in and around my area, mm. that you know, it would fucking annoy anyone, like, you know what I mean? Mm. But it is what it is, it's like. Support your own. That's all I have to say. And I, I just finally, obviously, you're looking very dapper in a, a boxing tickets NA t shirt. And Ooh, that it, one that fits me now. Why don't you rub me on over a small? Just you got a small now. That one fits me anymore, to be fair. A big dot on me. You, you had a large, I think, the last, a lot larger uh, elite medium the last time, but you've got a small, and even after eating, you know, 10 lorries of chicken there and Nando's, you can yeah. still fit into it. But yeah. it's obviously good that we can see that. Where we support you, you're supporting us as well. So we obviously 100%, thank, 100%. want to thank you for supporting a brand. But but look, well, obviously, but I want one of um, yellow and the, or the black, gold, black and gold, and gold black SB Sports. If you're watching, post me one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you have one coming. Anyhow, you obviously when the order goes in. But we want to obviously thank you. Obviously, you give us the opportunity of, of being your last interview and, and your longest interview of the week. Obviously, people other people's had interviews out, but but they don't know who you are and obviously what you're all about. And, we obviously want to thank you for giving us so much of your time before obviously you go and have another play tonight. 100%. I appreciate you. I appreciate boxing tickets and I, I don't really do much interviews, but I, I like to do them here. It's like it gets the word out. I mean, there's other platforms who don't even bother to they ask for them. So, I mean, I, I appreciate you and what you do and I'm wanting. I'm coming the whole way to Birmingham and doing this for me, as you know. So, mm -hmm. it's all about boxing tickets and I. Fantastic, what a plug to finish us off. Yeah. Well, look, obviously, um, victorious tomorrow night and still. Anybody that's watching, tune in to BT Sports from 7 30 pm and watch the Apache retain his British title. Thanks, Anto. Cheers, take care. Thanks, God. Thanks, nice. bye bye. Bye bye.